So what's the tangent of the picture? The tangent of the angle of the picture, what is it? Four thirds. So we have two times four thirds over one minus four thirds squared. What's two times four thirds? Eight thirds. And one minus four thirds squared is? Now you simplify that however you want. Some people like to do this subtraction, the common denominator subtract and then invert and multiply. I prefer just to multiply everything by nine. That's my common denominator. So on the top, I'll have 24. And on the bottom, I'll have nine minus 16. So my answer is negative 24 sevenths. Now, you're going to do every single problem that way that asks you, that gives you some kind of information about a function, and then asks you for the tangent of x plus y, the tangent of half of x, the tangent of 2x, anything. You're going to do it exactly the same way, just use whatever formula your, you know, the problem is. Okay? All right, what about the book problem? Does anybody have a question about one of the book problems that I assigned? Any question about one of the book problems? He's going Maggie. Ah, number five. Okay, we're looking at number five. This is at the end of the chapter, even though we haven't finished the chapter yet. Number five is prove the identity. And remember what that means is you're not looking for an answer like x equals 15 degrees. You are looking to change one side into the other. So we have cosine 3x equal to 4 cosine q minus 3 cosine x. Now, this is a little bit problematic, isn't it? Because, do you have anything on your purple sheet that deals with 3x? No. No. So what are we going to do? We can't deal with the 3x, so what are we going to do? Um. Yeah, factor is probably not the exact word we want to use, but I get what you mean. You have exactly the right idea. We want to break this apart and think of it as 2x plus x. Now, do we have a formula that helps us deal with the cosine of a sum? Yes. And that formula says we take the cosine of the first times the cosine of the second, right? minus the sine of the first, sine of the second. Oh. Is that okay? Now, what about this? Is that on my purple sheet? Is that on my purple sheet? Yes. yes. In fact, that's the one that's on there three times. So look at what you're trying to end up with. Which version do you think you ought to have? 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Yep, 2 cosine squared minus 1. And still times this extra cosine here. Again, this is the formula that you have options on. Which one you choose depends on what else is in the problem. This problem is all cosines. My goal is all cosines. So I'm going to use the version of this formula that has cosines. This one you do not have a choice on. Sine 2x is? 2 sine 2 sine x cosine x, cosine x and then you got that spare sine there too. All right, so let's see, let's distribute here. We have two cosine cubed minus cosine minus, okay, now what's all of this? We put all that together, what's that gonna be? 
Two sine squared cosine. And why does that make my Valentine's heart leap for joy? Oh my. Exactly. Kids, look. This is what I'm trying to end up with. Can I get rid of this? Very easily. What is sine squared? Cosine. 1 minus cosine squared. So I'm going to take that sine squared and replace it with 1 minus cosine squared. Now, everything's cosine, so hopefully when I start simplifying, I'll end up with what I was supposed to end up with. Let's see. We've got 2 cosine cubed minus cosine. All right, now we're going to distribute here. We're going to distribute. So that's going to be 2 times 1 times <coughs> cosine, so minus 2 cosine. And negative 2 times negative cosine squared times cosine would be positive. 2 cosine cubed. I just distribute there. I distribute it. All that stuff. Does that end up with what I wanted? 4 cosine cubes and minus 3 cosines. Yep, there we got it. Alright, what did you do with the sine 2x? How did it became this right here. Then what did you do with the other side? It's right here. So you can't do the same thing? Is it a 2x? No. Gotcha. See, the whole idea is to get this broken down into pieces we can deal with. We can deal with two x's because they're on our purple sheet. Actually, hopefully they're stored up here. But. All right. Anybody else from the book have a question about the book? Delaney. 39. 2 cosine equals 1. Without a calculator and a minus radian distance. Because this is a solve problem now. Okay, so this is different than the one we just did. This one, I am looking for an answer like x equals, you know, pi over 6 or something. All right, so here we go. Cosine equals 1 half. Where does the cosine equal a positive number? One and three. One and four. How do I know the cosine is a positive number in one and four? Cosine is x, right? X over r. Cosine is x, and x is positive in quadrant one and four. Okay, good. Now, I got a triangle there, and the cosine is one half. That triangle should look familiar to me. If that's a 1 and a 2, this has to be a root 3. Stephen, what's on your iPad? Take notes. Right. Have you been taking notes? Well, I haven't, but like, that was about to go on. Madeline, you want to tell me what's going to happen tonight? Uh, she's going to email you all. <laughs> it's going to be a bad time. I just don't get it. You know that. You know if I catch you, this is what's going to happen. You're just addicts. Like they like turned. I just turned on my Okay. Like I actually take notes on my All right. So we know what kind of angle do we have here. <laughs> 
It's a 60, but remember you're answering in radians. So 60 is what fraction of 180? Pi over 3. It's a third. 60 is a third. So this is actually pi over 3. Now, if that, I, I think we've done enough of it that for most of us we can make that conversion easily. If not, you know it's a 60 over to the side, pi over 180 equals 1 over 60. Do the actual work if, if that makes you more comfortable. Now, these are <coughs> answers. So what are my answers? Well, this is in the first quadrant, so that's an answer, and that angle is pi over 3. This is the other answer. It's all the way around here in quadrant 4. What will that answer be? Well, it's 300, so if you want to do this with 300, you can. Or it's 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. 6 thirds minus 1 third. Do you not subtract the 1? <coughs> um, and then what? That's what I tried to do. Okay, see our job is to solve for cosine. So we, we wouldn't want to do that. We want to get this by itself, just like a regular equation. It's like if you were walking down the hall and found this equation, what would you do with it? You wouldn't subtract one, you'd divide by two, the same exact concept. So how do you know when to do that and when to do If it's a quadratic, you're going to set it equal to zero. Yeah. So solving is solving. If it's a quadratic, you need to have it set equal to zero. If it's not a quadratic, then you just want to get, in this case, cosine by itself. Yeah. Annabelle? Okay, how do you know whether the answer is degrees or it tells you The directions will always let you know. So zero to two pi would be radians. Zero to three sixty would be degrees. Okay, did someone else have a hand up? Thirty-five. 35. 35 says uh, solve it graphically, find all solutions in this interval. Okay. Now, actually, solving graphically is easier because we don't have to use any of the identities. We just need to get our calculators out, uh, set them in radians. For number 35, we want to have our calculator set in radian mode. And our window on X will be 0 to 2 pi. So make sure I'm in radians. And then my window, I'll go 0 to 2 pi on x, uh-huh, because that's what the directions say. And then my y's, I don't know, I'm just going to set my y's from negative 2 to 2. Because, John, when I do these problems, you can do them lots of different ways. But when I do it, I'm going to set it equal to 0. And then I am looking, I don't know what this thing is going to look like, but I want to know where it equals zero. So I would be looking for the x-intercepts, and they're easy for me to find on my calculator. You could also graph the right side, or graph the right side, graph the left side, and look where they intersect. I just like to do it this way. It's my personal preference, but either way it will work. How do you make it sense? So I'm going to put it in my calculator. So you can't, th this notation is not possible in the calculator, so you have to put it in like this. And you have to have sine x in those parentheses. The sine x Yes, because otherwise it's just going to square the x, and you want it to square the whole thing. So it ends up looking it ends up looking like this because those <coughs> come in automatically on the X. Okay, so when I sketch this thing, now I mine mine looks like this. 
with the window I have set up, it looks like this. It's coming up, oops, and I can't see this part. It comes up and then it comes back down. Do I care that I can't see that? No, because if I am solving this equation, the only two points I care about are those. If I needed a maximum, for some reason, if I wanted a maximum here, then I would care about that. But right now, I only care about those two points. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm only gonna find one of them, John. You can find the other one the same way. Remember how we do that? We press um, second calc and then zero because I'm looking for an x-intercept. And then I gotta move my cursor. So it is somewhere over here somewhere and then move it so it's somewhere here somewhere. And that point is 1.119. So one of the roots is 1.119 radians. And you can find this one exactly the same. Way. That's how we do it graphically. Okay. Anybody else have a question about um, any other questions? Eleven. Um, Eleven is another proof. So this is the kind that you try to change one side into the other side. <coughs> Not like the one on the racing or the one we just did. Did you say 11? Yeah. Anybody? Change cotangent into tangent? Yeah. We definitely could do that. I can't do anything right now. I'm sorry. So we're going to change that. Now, often my gut feeling is to change into change everything into sines and cosines and you can't go wrong doing that you can end up with a longer problem doing that but it's fine to do that in this case I like this thought because if I'm supposed to be ending up with zero I'm going to need these two things to cancel out right and since if I can get them all in terms of tangents I can cancel out as well as I could if they were all sines and cosines so that's a good plan. But that second fraction is a disaster, so what are you going to do with it? Multiply, Multiply everything just in that fraction by tangent. So if I do that, I'll have tangent plus 1 over tangent minus 1. Would everybody agree with that? If I times by tangent, 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 tangent. Now, this is one of those tricky things from algebra class. Those denominators are not the same, but they're not totally different either. <coughs> Aren't they opposites of each other? So it's like having 2 over 7 and 3 over negative 7. Right? They're opposites of each other. So if we were to multiply this one, or either one, doesn't matter, I'll just do this one. If we were to multiply that top and bottom by negative one, what would that do to that, den that second denominator? It'd be one minus tangent then, wouldn't it? Which matches this one? But it would all, you also have to times the top, so that would be negative tangent minus 1. 
Well, what's going to happen when you add these two things together? Zero. It's all going to cancel out and leave you with zero. No, the common denominator becomes one minus the uh, but the numerator is zero. Zero over anything is just zero. Anybody else have a question about homework problems? Number seven. <laughs> Number seven is one of those. Um, we've seen this kind before, and my hint to you is work on the side that has the plus or minus as opposed to the side that has the times or divide. These two sides are very, very similar. The difference is this is a subtract, that's a times. Um, you start with the subtract. So start with the subtract side because if you can make these fractions, getting a common denominator will turn these two terms into one term. <coughs> so this is sine squared over cosine squared, and this is just sine squared over 1. So what's the next logical step? Uh, find the common, common denominator is cosine squared. Mm -hmm. This one's good. This one needs a cosine <coughs> squared, right? So 1. No, be careful. Sine squared times cosine squared is not one. It's just sine squared times cosine squared. Okay. So far we've changed into sines and cosines and we've gotten a common denominator. I have a splinter in my hand. I hope it does not interfere with my bowling game tonight faculty bowling tonight. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? Uh, actually, I'm terrible, but last week I bowled out of my mind. I bowled a 170, which is like triple my normal, so I'm not sure what happened. But tonight I'll be back to normal, I'm sure, especially with a wounded hand. Okay. Drop the cosines. You can't drop the cosines. You guys, just because it's trigonometry doesn't mean all your algebra rules go out the window. You cannot just cancel these. Whenever you have, I'm gonna, shh, I want you to listen to me. Whenever you have an addition or a subtraction, do not cancel anything unless you have factored first. If you factor, then you're allowed to cancel. Otherwise, no canceling ever if there's an add or subtract in the problem. Okay, so we are not going to cancel because we have an add or subtract. Can we factor? Yes. So we'll pull out a sine squared and be left with what? One minus cosine squared. Oh my, what is one minus cosine squared? Sine squared. Sine squared. So now on the top, I have sine squared times sine squared. And on the bottom, I have cosine squared. Now, nothing cancels. At this point, I could cancel because I have factored, but nothing cancels. However, Look at what you're trying to end up with. Sine squared, cosine squared. Yeah. These two, if I group them together, make a tangent. So I have sine squared times tangent squared, which is exactly what I wanted to end up with. Why is it not negative 1 minus cosine squared? Why would it be negative 1? Because it's negative. I'm pulling this sine squared out. There's no negative on that sine squared. So when I pull out a, a sine squared from a sine squared, I just get 1. When I pull a sine squared out of a negative sine squared cosine squared, I get a negative cosine squared. This, it's no different than if you had A minus AB. If you 
pull out an A, it's 1 minus B. Exactly the same idea. Alright, anything else from the books? Alright, find in your packet, there's a sheet we haven't done yet. It's called, oh, pass your homeworks in. Would you put your name on them and pass them in? I want to make sure we're doing this. If I have my free um, test, can I see that? All right, yeah, you can turn that in. Okay, quick review. 2, 1, 13 is the uh, name of the paper. Yeah, so in your packet, I'm looking for the quick, it's called quick review, 2, 1, 13. So we're passing in our homeworks. I hope we can get the whole thing done, but in case we can't, who, which one shall we start with? One, two, three, or four? Oh, did we already do one? Okay, we already did one. Okay, so we're going to two, three, and four. Three. All right, three is one like I'm just embracing here. Three is a prove. So we're going to change one side into the other side. So I hear from the audience, we should start on the left side. I believe that's a good idea. What do we want to do to the left side? Change it into signs and cosine. Now, that's going to be sign. Now, would it blow your mind if I just wrote over cosine for my numerator? Because what is secant? One over cosine. So what's going to happen when I multiply sine times one over cosine? When I get sine over cosine? Which is two Yeah, but I'm going the other way. I'm not going to change it. So then I got sine over cosine plus cosine over sine. Multiply by? Uh, you got to multiply by both of them because you want to clear all the fractions. So you're going to multiply by cosine sine. This is too much for me to do in my head, so I'm going to write it down. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to cancel everything that cancels. So cosines cancel right at the first term. Leaving me on top with nothing but sine squared. Cosines cancel down here, leaving me with sine squared. Plus, sines cancel here. Cosine squared. What's in your denominator? One. One. That was not hard, was it? Uh -uh. Okay? Two and four. Two. 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 Find the exact value of the sine 345. You had to do this yesterday. And I was a little bit surprised at the number of mistakes we had on this. Step one. Find something that either adds or subtracts to 345. And it's got to be a special angle. So one option would be 300 plus 45. That's the first one that pops into my mind. There are tons of options. But you've got to use angles that are 30, 60s, or 45s. And 300 and 45 are. So now the formula. Sine 
sine. 300. Cosine. Yep. Plus cosine 300. Sine 45. Then what? Okay, I'm going to plug in my values, so I have to draw a picture in order to do that. Although maybe the 45s we don't need a picture for. What's the <coughs> sine and cosine for 45? Root 2 over 2. That's why we like to use 45. 300, I'll draw a picture of. 300 is in quadrant 4. If this is 300, what's my reference angle? 60 which means this is root 3, 1, and 2. Anything negative, root 3 is negative. That was the biggest mistake made yesterday. You left your negatives out. What's the sign? Negative root 3 over 2. And your cosine? 1 half. So our answer is negative root 6 plus root 2 all over Four. And that looks familiar, doesn't it? Because we almost always get answers that look like that. Especially if they're sine and cosine problems, that's what the answers always look like. All right, number four. Forget the angle for a moment. It says two sine cosine. 2 sine cosine is the formula for? For the ones that have like the 2x or the sine of 2x, do you multiply times like 2 times 18 or is it 2 times 18? This is the formula that's in this problem, right? 2 sine cosine, right? Except instead of x's, we have... 18s. So this is an 18, this is an 18, this is an 18. So what's that the sign of? 36. 2 times 18, which is 36. This is the formula for the sign of 36. What's B? Sine cosine minus cosine sine is a formula for the sign of? <coughs> 53 minus 10, the sine of 43. It's this formula exactly, only it's a minus. Cosine cosine plus sine sine. Cosine. That's a cosine minus, and it would be 100 minus 30, so that's the cosine of 70. That's the way. Katie? Never mind. And then cosine squared minus sine squared. Which identity is that? Something. One. It is not one. <coughs> what is one? Cosine squared plus. plus sine squared. That would be one. If that were a plus sign, it would be one. It's not a plus. It's, it's a cosine. minus. Cosine it's cosine 2x. And that identity says... Cosine squared minus sine squared. That's what it says. But instead of x's, we have 51's. So what is this a formula for? The cosine of 2 times 51 or the cosine of 102. Tonight's homework <clears throat> is the sheet called pretest number two. And I ran out of room on the answer, so inside this squiggly, if you're looking at pretest number two, it's actually the last answer because I ran out of room on my other piece of paper, so I just stuck it on the problem side. <coughs> Now, if you look at pretest number one, and then you look at pretest number two, do they look remotely similar to each other? 
Yes. Things are a little bit different order maybe, but they're pretty much the same. What do you think real test number one looks like? That. Yes. And we're going to have our test on Monday. Uh, so many kids have a bunch of tests tomorrow, and we're just going to have our test on Monday. Um, would you turn that off, Stephen? So you have, I don't think we have an assembly. 